In the previous video, we created our first component, the navigation. In this video, we're going to create an animated information modal using built-in view components, transition, and teleport. Now, when we click on the information icon here within our navigation, we want to toggle in this modal right here with all the information about how this application works. To begin, let's first create a new component for our modal. So inside of our components folder, we'll create a new file here and we'll call this base modal.view. Within here, let's start off by creating our view boilerplate. So we'll type in vbase and we'll select the vbase3 setup. And then to give us some more space, we'll close our side panel. So let's begin with the markup. Now for this div we have here, it's going to act as our modal wrapper. And let's apply a few classes here. Now the first thing we're going to add is a position of absolute. Then we're going to give it a width of 100%. We're going to set the background color here to black. And we also want to set a background opacity of 30%. So we're going to say BG opacity. And then we're going to specify the value of 30, which is 30%. Then we want to set the height to H screen to take up 100 VH. We're going to set the top to zero and also the left to zero. We're going to set the display to flex. We'll justify all the items to the center. And then we're going to give it some padding on the left and right by saying PX and the value of eight, which is 32 pixels. Then inside of this div, we're going to create an additional div for the modal content itself. And we'll apply some classes. So the first thing we're going to do is apply some padding to all sides by using the class P4. Then we're going to set a background color to white and we'll align this to the start by using the class self start. We'll add some margin to the top by using the class MT and passing the value of 32, which is 128 pixels. And then lastly here, we're going to give it a max width and we're going to say max W here. And we're going to use our breakpoint here of screen medium to give it a max width of 768 pixels. Now for the content of this mold, we're going to be using what is called a slot and this allows your component to become reusable and dynamic because you can then define the markup that you want to display inside of this modal in the parent in which you are defining this component. Now to add this inside of our modal content div, we just want to pass in a slot tag here. And when we define this component inside of a different component and we pass in some markup, then this slot tag will be replaced with the content that we define within that component. And we'll see this shortly when we actually import and use this component inside of our site navigation. Now to close this modal, we're also going to have a button here inside of our modal content. And let's apply some classes. We'll start off by setting the text color to white. We'll add some margin on the top by saying MT8, which is 32 pixels. We're going to give it a background color of our weather primary. And then we'll add some padding to the top and bottom with PY2. And then we'll do some padding on the left and right with PX and the value of 6. And for the button content, we'll just have this say close. So let's head over to the site navigation component and import and define our base modal. And where we're going to do this is right below our icons and we can even collapse this to save some space. So let's define the base modal here. And we want to make sure this has an opening base modal tag and a closing base modal tag and not a self closing tag because we are going to be defining some slot content. So inside of our base modal, we can just define our slot content. So we'll say H1 and we'll say hello from modal here. And if we save this, you can see we now have our modal here. Now, the reason why we're not seeing any text here is because if we head up to our nav tag here, the text is set to white. So if we specify the class here and we put it to text black, we should now see our modal content. To save some time for this lesson, I will be pasting in the markup for our information modal. Now, if you are looking to copy and paste this in, just head down below to the description and there should be a link to the GitHub repository and just look for the branch lesson four or above and you should be able to find this markup to copy and paste in. So currently by default, as you can see, our modal is active and we don't want that. We only want our modal to be active when we click on this information icon here. So the first thing we need to do to fix this is actually allow for our base modal to accept a prop. Inside of the script tag, in order for this component to accept the prop, we need to use something called the define props macro. And then we can define all the props that we want to use here inside of our component. So the prop that we're going to create is called modal active. And then we want to set a few things here. The first thing we want to do is set the type, which is going to be Boolean. And then we want to set a default value. So we'll set default here and we'll set this to false. 
Then inside of the template, we can reference our modal active prop to hide or show the modal using a V show directive and a V if directive. And you'll see why we're using both of these later on when we begin to animate our modal. So here on our modal wrapper, we're going to use a V show directive and we'll say only show this if modal active is set to true. And then on our modal content, we're going to use a V if directive here and only show this if modal active is true as well. And if we do a refresh here, as you can see by default, we're no longer are going to see our modal. Now to hide and show this modal when we click on this information icon, we need to create a variable here inside of our site navigation component that we can toggle from true to false and then bind that value to our prop that we created here inside of base modal. So within our script here, let's create a new variable and we'll call this modal active as well. And to make this reactive, we're gonna use something called a ref here, which when we use this, it's gonna automatically import it for us. And then we're gonna set this equal to null initially. And to toggle this value from true to false, we're going to create a function called toggle modal and we'll set this equal to an arrow function here. And all we're going to do is say modal active and to actually get the value of a ref, we have to use something called dot value here. And we're going to set it equal to the opposite of whatever the current state of the variable is in. So if it's currently false, when this function runs, it's going to be set to true and vice versa. And now on the base modal component, we want to bind this newly created value here inside of our script called modal active to the prod that we define on our base modal, which is modal active as well. So to do this on our base modal component, we're gonna say colon and the name of the prop, which is modal active. And we'll set this equal to modal active, which is the name of the variable we created here inside of this component. Then each time we click on this information icon here, we want to run this function called toggle modal. So inside of this div with our icons, we want to add a click handler here on our circle icon. So we'll say click here, and then we want to run the function toggle modal. And if we save this and now we click on our information icon, we should now see our modal appear. With the modal currently open, if we attempt to close it, as you can see, nothing is going to happen. In order to fix this, we need to emit a event back to our parent component, which is site navigation, from within our base modal component. And when this component of base modal hears that event within our site navigation, we then want to run our function of toggle modal to alter the value of our prop here to close our modal. Within the base modal component, in order to emit a event from this component, we first need to define it. So we do this using another macro called define emits, and then we can define all the emits that we want to have inside of this component. And for this component, we're gonna have one called close modal. Then within our button, every time that we click on here, we want to run this emit. So we'll say add click, and we'll set this equal to, and we can do an inline emit here using dollar sign emit, and then the actual event that we want to emit, which is called close modal. Then inside of our site navigation component on our base modal here, we can listen for this event by saying at, and then we'll do close modal. And then every time we hear this event, we wanna run our function of toggle modal here. Then if we click on the close button here, we should see our modal close, which we do. Currently when we show and hide the modal, as you can see, it appears instantly and also disappears instantly, which is not a very good user experience. Now to improve this, we can add transitions to our modal using something built into view called the transition component. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you would see why we use a V show directive here on the div for the modal wrapper and then a VF directive here on the div for the modal content. Now, the reason why we did this is because we're going to be using two separate animations, one for the modal wrapper and then an animation for the modal content. So to begin here, what we wanna do is first off, we want to wrap our entire div here with a transition component. Then what we wanna do is then do the same thing here with our modal content. So we'll highlight this and do the same exact thing. Now I won't be covering this transition component in depth here within this series. However, if you do wanna learn more about these, Sean and myself both have tutorials on the transition component itself that goes into a little bit more detail and gives you a little bit more background with how they work. However, I will cover a few things here to make sure that what we're doing here today does make sense. So when we wrap an element inside of a transition component, what's going to happen is the component itself is going to apply classes based on whether or not the element is leaving or entering the DOM. Now how the component determines whether or not it's leaving or entering the DOM is through conditional rendering using a V if or conditional display using a V show.
So depending on whether or not the element is entering the DOM or leaving the DOM, there are six different classes that can be applied which we can target to transition or animate our element. Now if it's entering the DOM, we have three different classes. We have vEnterFrom, vEnterActive, and vEnter2. And if the element is leaving the DOM, we have vLeaveFrom, vLeaveActive, and vLeave2. And this diagram on the view documentation is a very great visual to understand exactly how this works. So, for example, we could target the vEnterFrom class here to have an opacity of 0. Then, what the vEnterActive class does is control the duration of the transition. So, for example, we could set this to 500 milliseconds. Then, we could target the vEnter2 class here to have an opacity of 1. And then, over the span of 500 milliseconds, it would go from an opacity of 0 to an opacity of 1. For this component, we have two transition components, and we want to make our transitions unique. So the way we can do this is by passing a name prop here on the transition component itself. And what this does, instead of having the V interactive class, it's going to be whatever the name is interactive. So for example, if we say modal outer here, it'll be modal outer interactive or modal outer inter2. And we're going to do the same thing here for the one that's wrapping our content, and we'll call this one modal inner. Now, although we are using Tailwind, we're going to be using traditional CSS to transition these elements. So within our base modal component here, let's first off get rid of this lang on our style tag. And then to save some time here, I'm going to copy and paste in some of these classes. So the first one we have here is modal outer interactive and then modal outer leave active. And once again, if you want to copy and paste this in, you should be able to head to lesson four or above inside of the GitHub repository and be able to copy these styles. So as I mentioned, these two classes control the duration of the entering transition and the leaving transition. So what we have defined here is a transition property and we want to transition the opacity over three seconds. And then for the easing, we have a custom cubic bezier function. And for the transition itself, we're going to have a fade in and fade out of our modal wrap. So for this, I'll paste in two more selectors here of modal outer enter from and modal outer leave to. And we're going to have an opacity property here of zero. Now, the reason why we don't have to define a modal outer enter to and a modal outer leave from is because the default opacity is already one. So we don't need to specify that. And if we open up our modal now, as you can see, we have a really nice fade in effect. And when we close it, we're going to have a nice fade out effect. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually transition in the modal content itself to kind of scale in and make it look like it's popping out at us. So for this transition, it's going to look very similar to the modal outer transition that we just did. And again, I'm going to paste in the selectors. So for this one, for the interactive and leave active, they're very similar to the modal outer enter and leave active that we just created. Now, the biggest difference is we're going to apply a 15 second delay to the interactive on the modal inner. And for the transition itself, we're going to target the enter from to have an opacity of zero. And then we're also going to target the transform property and do a scale and start it at 0.8. And the default is one. And the same thing here for the leave two, we're going to have the transform property and we're going to have it go to a scale of 0.8. And now if we open up the modal, as you can see, it's going to fade in and also the modal content is going to pop out at us. And the same thing is going to happen when we close it, it'll fade and the modal will go back into the page. So currently, if we take a look at our modal, everything works as expected. We can open it. It looks great from a visual perspective, and then we can also close it. So there's nothing wrong with how we did things. However, if we go to inspect our application here, and let's also open back up this modal, let's take a look at the structure of our application. So we have our body tag, then we have this div with an ID of app, and then we have this div that's wrapping our entire application. Then we have our header tag, then we have our nav tag, and then inside of this nav tag, we we have our modal here. Now currently this application is quite small and the application in general isn't going to be that large where I think we would even have any sort of styling issues. However, I do want to mention this because if your application does continue to grow and you are positioning things absolute, then later on in your application, if you have multiple items like this, then you could encounter some styling issues, which can just become a mess to handle. And Vue has created something to address this called the teleport component. Now, when creating an application without the use of a framework, you usually position your modals at the top level of your body tag, and that's exactly what the teleport component allows you to do.
So instead of having our modal heavily nested here inside of our navigation tag, we can teleport it to outside of the app here inside of our body tag. And the best part is we don't have to do anything within our component. We can keep everything organized as we have it right now, but just the actual content here will be teleported outside of our application and we won't lose any of our reactive data or functionality that comes along with that component we're teleporting. So within the base modal component, let's collapse our transition tag here and then highlight this entire thing. And then we'll use the Emmet wrap with an abbreviation to wrap our entire component here inside of the teleport component. And then this accepts a required to prop, which we're just going to specify. We want to teleport this to the body tag. And as you can see here inside of the browser, our modal is now living outside of our view application. And if we go to open it here, as you can see, everything is still going to work as expected. Now again, this probably isn't required for this application, but I believe it's a good habit to get into using this component to avoid issues later down the road if your application continues to grow.